my story is, is a story of grace. I mean, we all have that same story of grace. My circumstances were different. I spent 23 years in prison for a crime I didn't commit. Um, I got locked up and arrested on my 20th birthday, and I just celebrated my 44th this past May. I've been out for a year and a half now. Um, by all intents, it was a, a miracle that I ever got out of prison for better than 10 years. I tried and tried in my own strength to, to try to get out, and I kept getting turned down. And oddly, the very judge who gave me two life sentences was the one who wrote me a letter and told me how to get DNA testing done. Uh, the DNA testing got done in 2003. I was proven innocent in 2004, and I still wasn't let go. They refused to release me. I now know that that was God because I still had, he still had a lot, to work, a lot of work to do in me. But from there, the Innocence Project took my case after DNA proved it wasn't me. And we're what, nine and a half years later, I'm, I'm sitting in my own house with a great job and a great wife and, and all the blessings that I, I've ever wanted or could imagine. But it, God used that time to bring me to my knees and to bring me to Him. And I had to get to the end of myself. And when I did get to the end of myself, there was people there to pick me up. And that was Cairo's volunteers. But God took all that and He turned it around, just like He did for Joseph. And He turned it around for my good. And just not for my good, we now go around and we, and we tell other people about Kairos. And I've been able to go around the state and talk to different churches and organizations and tell them about what Kairos did to me. I tell them how I came to Christ. I said, I was in prison and someone visited me and that was Kairos. And you know, the Bible tells us that that's Jesus. That when you go and visit somebody in prison, that, that's, that's Jesus. To know how I was when I first went to prison, not because that's how I was on the streets, but that's just because that's how I had to be. When I first went to prison at 20 years old, I was young, they threw me straight into this maximum security institution, and I had to develop an attitude and grow up really, really quick. So I developed the life of prison and everything that goes along with that. And if I would have continued in that life and been able to get out of prison without Kairos, I could have possibly been dead by now. Um, and if I wasn't dead, I'd certainly be well on my way to it or back in jail, which to me would be even worse. God used Kairos to change my life. It, there's gonna be people who watch this video and, and they're gonna laugh when I say this, but when I first went to my Kairos, it was um, number eight at Augusta, and I was slightly rough around the edges. And I was an unbeliever, I was unsaved, but God kept putting it on my heart and putting people in my life, telling me, hey, look, you know, you ought to try Kairos. And I did, with absolutely no intention of going, I signed up. And with absolutely no intention of going back, I went to the first day. And with absolutely no intention of ever going back again, I went to the second day and I ended up finishing the weekend. But it changed my life. I didn't give my life to Christ that day. I, I didn't give my life to Christ for a long time after that, but the seeds were planted. And those seeds that were planted in my life began to bloom and produce seeds that I could plant in other people's lives. When I finally was able to come to Christ, I can look back and see what Kairos had to do with that. The, just not the weekend, but, but the reunions, the, the, the monthly love that Kairos members came in and brought into us. That's what kept me interested in, and it's what got me going to church, and it's what kept me encouraged, and it, and it meant everything. I, I was in prison with the possibility of serving the rest of my life there, of no hope of getting out, and it brought hope. Not of getting out, but it just brought hope because these people cared about me. And the love that these people showed me was just unbelievable. And it made all the difference in the world. And after Kairos, I actually became the worship leader at the church here at the prison. And I was that for years. I've sang solos. I've, I've done all these things 
that were completely contrary to who I used to be because I went through Kairos and God used that to change me. But I went from being a very useless individual to being someone that God could use to people I hope will not feel as useless as I did. Kairos is effective because of the people that allow themselves to be used by God. If it, if it wasn't for the volunteers that go into prisons, Kairos would mean absolutely nothing. It was an odd thing for me when I went there and I looked at all the men who were at that weekend, and I'm thinking, you guys ain't got nothing better to do but come in here to a prison and eat lousy food under lousy conditions and drink lousy coffee with a bunch of people that society has just given up on. But that's what made a difference because they did it. They did it willingly. They used their own time. They used their own money. They sacrificed time with their families and friends to come in and spend time with me. And that, out of everything that Kairos does, in my opinion, is the most effective part of Kairos because these guys and, these, and their wives and all the other people that support that weekend could be doing anything else but come to a prison. And they chose to do that. And that means something. That, means, that meant something to me, and I know it means something to each and every person that goes through Kairos. It, it changes things. And it's changing prisons. Kairos is changing prisons. And that's why there's a lot of these wardens trying to make sure that they can get Kairos into their prisons because they know it makes a difference. And it's doing that all across the country because God is there. And, you know, when the light shows up, the darkness has to flee. I love them. And they know I love them. And I know they love me. There, there's times that I get texts and phone calls and, and I still receive letters. And they're my family. And they're, there's hundreds of them. And it's the most family I ever had. When I went to prison, I lost, I lost everything. I had my parents, but that, that was pretty much it when I went to prison. Everybody else had pretty much given up on me. They just believed everything the court said, that the newspaper said. And I lost it all. And then little by little, God would bring people into my life and he brought my wife into my life. But I went to Kairos and he gave me a family again. And that meant something because I, I've been in some of the hardest prisons in Virginia. At that time, anyhow, I know there's much harder ones now. But these people, these people made me their family when I didn't have none. They were my friends, my brothers, my sisters. Some of them were like mothers to me and some of them were like fathers. And, and they, they encouraged me and guided me and gave me advice and wisdom. But most of all, they just kept loving me. I'd come in and I'd have an attitude and wouldn't want to do anything and say, all right, we'll just sit here with you and just enjoy being with you. And they accepted me willingly and they loved me openly and it changed me. God used that to change me. And, you know, there's gonna, there's gonna come a time when there's gonna be people who volunteer and they go in and they're gonna see these things. But the greatest, I, I guess, one of the most instrumental things that happened to me on my Kairos weekend was I got a bag of letters. I didn't let anybody see it, but I cried. And that, that chip I had really did melt away. If you couldn't do anything else in Kairos but write a letter to a man who's never gotten a letter while he's in prison, you, you, would, you can change the world with just that one letter. Those, those words of encouragement and love can change the world because they changed me. And then I was in turn able to go back into the prisons and encourage other people. They, they, they showed me how to be able to love people who really seemed unloving and to be able to tolerate people who seemed intolerable. And it changed me and it's changing the prisons. And when it's changing these guys in prison, when they get out, 
it's going to change their neighborhoods. And when it changes their neighborhoods, it starts changing the cities and the cities, the states, the states, the country. I mean, it, and it just goes on and on and on. You will never be more blessed than when you walk into a prison and see God do something in a man's heart that has never been done before. To, to see somebody with a chip on his shoulder just melt by the end of that weekend and soften up. And really, no matter how hard they fight it, if they make it to the end of Kairos, they're softer. They've been touched. Whether they've been saved or not, they've been touched. The greatest thing we can do with our lives and the blessings in which God has given us is to give those for someone else. And I mean, I'm, I'm certainly biased because of my own personal um, part in Kairos, but Kairos is probably one of the biggest blessings anybody's ever gonna be able to participate in. If you haven't made up your mind, don't worry about it being prison. Don't worry about the type of people that are gonna be there. You're gonna be safe. They're gonna watch over you. They're gonna protect you. And the reality is the men who are in the Kairos weekend would be the ones that protected you the greatest. So if, if you really want to change the world, start one life at a time, start with your own, and then take it to prison and help change somebody else's.